Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we are talking all about decorative pots, or actually the benefits of decorative pots. I started this video out as the pros and cons of decorative pots, but honestly, I didn't find all that many cons, and the cons that I found were either related to misuse, either instances where I really don't see how anybody would consider, oh, I need a decorative pot for my greenhouse. <laughs> even though I have an automated watering system, you know? So there weren't really very relevant cons and the drawbacks that I can find might be pros for others. I will mention them, but we will focus on the benefits of the creative pots and why I use them. So I hope you'll enjoy today's video. If you do, don't forget to give it a like, it really helps it out. And why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week, all sorts of work it and sometimes plant content as well. Righty. So I got a list on my phone, but I don't have my phone here, of course. So I'm prepared, so I'm prepared. Alrighty then. Benefit number one. A decorative pot acts as a much prettier dish under your orchid pot. Using dishes for plant pots is a bit of a must when you grow orchids in your home, particularly if you display them on furniture, especially wood furniture. We really don't want any water on our furniture or any surface. You don't want water dripping on the floor, on the carpet, right? Well, definitely decorative pots will keep all of that water in, not out on the shelf or on the floor. I personally prefer decorative pots to dishes because dishes, being that they're very shallow, tend to be wide to be able to retain that excess water, right? Well, when you don't have a whole lot of space on your shelf, putting orchids at a greater distance because the dishes don't allow you to put them closer can be rather annoying. I prefer decorative pots because I can actually display orchids, let's say, at this distance from each other. Whereas with a dish, maybe I would have to put them like that. An orchid next to an orchid next to an orchid kind of accumulates and I end up with a very inefficiently organized shelf. While space in between orchids is beneficial, sometimes dishes just create too much space for my taste because not all orchids are at the same size. Some of them are rather tall and slender and their leaves are somewhere up here and you wanna display it next to an orchid which has very low leaves. So you can even touch the pots and that would be fine. But with a dish, you cannot. Now, I know most people water their orchids at the sink and that is preferable actually, particularly for beginners. I myself don't. I water directly on the shelf. I'll link you to a video that explains that down below. It's not as easy as just watering on the shelf. I do preparations in the potting mix, but sometimes it happens that I spill a little too much water. And I've had it happen in the past that that water starts to overflow the dish. It doesn't happen instantly. I see the water coming out. I think I'm fine. Two minutes later, I hear it dripping on the floor. And that's not fun, particularly because I do have some plugs under my shelves. So this type of a setup prevents spilling of water on the floor. If I have too much water here, obviously I can dump it out. I kind of know now when I overdo it a little bit with water, but anyway, these guys keep me much safer than a dish. And personally, you know, I don't really like dishes. So benefit number one takes the place of a dish and I'm perfectly fine with that. Benefit number two, they keep much more shade to the root system, preventing excessive algae. This is something that I'm sure not everybody will experience, but I do believe some environments are just very, very prone to algae production. With excessive algae or particular types of algae or even cyanobacteria, if you accumulate too many of them, they can become detrimental to the root system. I do believe many of them produce byproducts that are toxic to other plants. It's all about competitiveness and generally outcompeting your neighbors, right? So I never like to let excessive algae form in my pots. The accumulation of algae is inevitable for me, but it's important not to let it go out of hand. Being that the creative pots do shade the entire pot, algae have a harder time developing. They need light just like plants. They do photosynthesize. And when you cut the source of light, obviously they just have a much harder time. So that is a plus for me. Now, I know that some will argue that they do cut the light from the orchid roots themselves and they photosynthesize and that's not good. Well, I'm not gonna dwell on the subject too much, but I made a totally separate video on my shorts channel. I will link you to it down below in which I explain very well, in my opinion, why roots really, really don't need that light. I mean, all of my collection is in decorative pots. Do you see my orchids suffering tremendously <laughs> from the lack of light to the roots? 
Not really, right? Well, there is also an explanation to that. So check that video out if you're interested. But bottom line, transparent pots for many, many growers are just a window to the soul, <laughs> to the roots of the orchid. They're not used for providing light to the roots. You can very well grow these orchids in completely opaque clay pots or other types of opaque pots as well, and they will not suffer. But at the same time, you're not gonna be able to see the roots. And for beginners, seeing roots is actually very, very useful. Third benefit, decorative pots keep to some extent roots a lot more tidy and in a little bit more higher humidity. Now you might already know, epiphytic orchids start to create roots pretty much everywhere. And not only on the top of the pot, but also at the bottom, through the drainage, through the ventilation holes, they go wild. And that is fine, that's what they're supposed to do. If they're growing wildly, chances are your orchid has a lot of energy, which is a good thing, but it can become slightly annoying. Quite a nuisance, again, if you grow your orchid on a wooden surface which you want to protect. Sometimes they can even grow on walls. Well, the decorative pot keeps some of these roots contained, not growing on your furniture. They will not completely hold everyone, but some roots, indeed, you can see, they will just grow around the pot in higher humidity conditions because the water that will drain here will start to evaporate near the roots. Everybody's kind of happy, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Orchids inevitably will start to grow roots through the drainage, through the ventilation holes. You cannot really stop it. You need to let them do their thing. But imagine all of these roots that start to grow inside starting to grow on the surfaces upon which you keep your orchids. Maybe not the best thing for you, right? Maybe you don't care about the furniture, but if you do, I think it's much better and it's just much tidier, safer for the orchid as well to keep the roots closer to the orchid. If you have roots sprawling everywhere and you have a cat or you yourself or children, they can snag their clothes or their little fur or the tail on these roots and just drag the orchid on the floor. I've had it happen quite a lot with old flower spikes so I'm on top of cutting flower spikes, but also with sprawling roots. The tidier I can keep the orchid, the safer it is for it as well. And decorative pots definitely land a little bit of a helping hand. So that for me is a benefit. Benefit number four, I think we're at four. Decorative pots can keep very top heavy orchids in place, specifically with orchids that tend to create very large flower spikes or they are pendant, sometimes they can become top heavy. Even Phalaenopsis, as they grow and they start to lean towards the light, which by the way, it's very normal, they can be very heavy. And at some point out of the blue, your orchid can topple over the shelf. You'll find it on the floor and you're gonna think to yourself, what happened? Because I don't have a cat. Do I have a cat? Did I feed my cat? <laughs> out of the blue, it can happen. Well, there are decorative pots on the market which are pretty heavy, like the clay ones. These pots are generally heavier than the orchids themselves. Of course, if the orchids are not super, super big. So the orchid out of the blue falling on the floor, not really gonna happen with a decorative pot. Sometimes if you wanna have arching flower spikes or that beautiful Phalaenopsis cascade, your orchid will become so, so top heavy. You will absolutely need to stabilize it somehow, tie it to some pole, put a rock on it, or use a clay decorative container. Very heavy decorative containers are not necessarily good for glass shelves, but even these containers, which are metal containers, by the way, they can offer a little bit more weight to the pot, which can be very, very, very useful. So for me, that is again, another bonus. Obviously this can be a con depending how you grow your orchids. If you don't need something heavy on a particular surface, that can be a con, but it can definitely be addressed. Just so you know though, decorative pots will generally make these flimsy plastic pots quite a lot heavier than they are. Most cases, good thing. Very few cases, maybe bad thing. Benefit number five, which again can be a con. Decorative pots can maintain humidity inside the actual orchid pot for a little longer. Now, let's get the misuse out of the way real fast. Obviously, if you're gonna use a decorative pot which creates a perfect seal with the interior pot, yeah, that would be a very bad thing because the roots might suffocate if the water doesn't really evaporate all that fast. 
But that is not a con of decorative pots, that is just misuse. So when choosing a decorative pot, make sure there is some space between the actual orchid pot and the decorative pot for the water vapor to have access to ambiental air. If the decorative pot is too tight, the water will condensate and fall right back inside, it's just not gonna evaporate. However, even with this space between the two pots, since your orchid is not dangling in the wind, it doesn't have direct access, especially at the bottom with air, open fresh air, these pots can actually dry a little bit slower than bare pots in the air. That for me is a good thing because I do live in a pretty hot climate. For those of you who have a really dry house or pretty warm temperatures all the time, a decorative pot can help you not water all that often. It can help you keep your orchid a little bit more hydrated. I can see how this can be a con depending on environment. Case in which you need to address or adapt a little bit the potting mix you use, the size of the decorative pot, the amount of air holes that you put in your orchid pot and so on and so forth. You need to mediate a little bit the processes. Overall though, maintaining humidity in is not generally a bad thing if this is what you need. And for me, it is definitely a benefit. I'm sure for some of you is as well. And lastly, let us not ignore the superficial aspect. They look very, very pretty. They can be a piece of your decor. On the market, you can find all sorts of decorative pots without drainage that have all sorts of colors. Some of them can look like antique pots. Some of them have beautiful embellishments on them. Some can look very, very simple, more of an urban style. The choice is yours, really. You can integrate a plant so well into your decor by using decorative pots. Certainly, in my opinion, they look much better than dishes. Who agrees? Like with anything, you need to use them properly. Every good thing, if used excessively or incorrectly, can become a very bad thing. And many people will try to dissuade you not to use certain things because of the possibility of misuse. But hey, if that were the case, we would never use, I don't know, bottle openers. <laughs> You can misuse anything in this world. Just because somebody might misuse it doesn't mean you should not use it. But obviously, you need to adapt everything to your particular environment, your conditions, your orchids. And you have to ask yourself the question, do you really need it? Obviously, if you have a self-watering or automated watering greenhouse, I mean, why would you need them? You just collect water, right? You need that water to train. So this is more of a home grower product, right? And speaking about products, you can find decorative pots at local garden centers, flower shops, obviously, even online. If you're wondering where I get all of my decorative pots, 90% of them are from Ikea, which I'm sure many of you have in your countries. So if you're interested in quite affordable metal decorative pots, visit Ikea and see if you like what they have. And with that said, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have some other benefits that I didn't think of or that I don't consider beneficial for me, write them down in the comments section. Let us know why you like your decorative pots. And with that said, if you want to follow me on social media, search for me, I'm at Miss Orchid Girl. Check out my short content channel. I'll link you to it down below. But most importantly, subscribe to this channel so you stay up to date with all of the videos that I upload. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.